All right, this video is discussing the topic of blood grouping. Hopefully, uh, most of you know your blood type. If not, um, you will learn your blood type and do some actual blood typing in advanced AMP if you take that class. Um, but anyway, um, understanding a person's blood type is really important, especially if they need to receive blood um, in the hospital for an accident, during surgery, um, blood loss during childbirth, a number of different reasons why someone might need to receive um, donated blood. So it's important to know the blood type and blood type is determined by what antigens, another name for them in reference to red blood cells are agglutinogens, um, what antigens are present on the surface of the red blood cells. Recall from the beginning of the semester when we talked about the different structures of the plasma membrane, one of those structures um, was uh, the carbohydrate molecules that extended off the surface of the cell membrane. Well, these are uh, glycoproteins. The glycoproteins um, present on our red blood cells determine what our blood type is. So for example, looking in this chart, we see that a person who is blood type A has A antigen on the surface of their red blood cells. So there are glycoproteins that we just assign the title of A on the surface of their red blood cells. A person with B blood type has B antigen on the surface of their red blood cells, and a person with AB blood type has both A and B antigens on their red blood cells. And a person that is type O blood, as shown here, has no antigens on their red blood cells. So these antigens that are found on our red blood cells are determined by genetics. So it depends what your mother and father's blood types are as to what your blood type is. So you're born with these. These are determined by genetics and we have these antigens at birth. Now again remember that blood is made up of the liquid part plasma and the formed elements of which most are red blood cells. So this is the solid part of our blood that has these red blood cells with the antigens on them. The plasma has a number of different components. We talked about plasma is about 91 percent water and the other percent is made up of different proteins. Well these proteins are globulins which are antibodies so these are found in the plasma and we form antibodies when we are exposed to foreign substances. So a person who is type A blood will form antibodies against the other antigen that could be found in a red blood cell which would be B antigen. And the reason the reason why they form antibodies against B is because it's considered foreign. When a person is born with type A blood, the A antigen is considered self. So we don't form antibodies against ourself, otherwise that would destroy our red blood cells and we wouldn't survive. So when we form antibodies, it's against something that's not ourself. It's not something that we are born with. So a person with type A blood will have B antibodies in their plasma. The opposite is true for someone with type B blood. If they are type B blood, then they recognize B as self, and if they're exposed to A antigen, they will form A antibodies. Now, where do these antibodies come from? The thought is that maybe we are exposed in our food. So we have exposures to these different antigens in our environment, in our food, and the thought is maybe this, these antibodies form you know, with exposure to different foods. So we want to make sure after a person has formed antibodies, which is usually early in life, that we don't introduce that antigen on a red blood cell um, that the person receiving that blood has an antibody for. So let's look at the type AB blood. Type AB, they have both A and B antigen on their red blood cells, so that's considered self. Therefore, they are not going to form antibodies to either A or B because they're both considered self. So we would not expect to see any antibodies in their plasma because they have the antigens on their red blood cells that they already recognize from at birth. But now a type O blood type, there are no antigens on the red, surface of their red blood cell, neither A nor B, so therefore they're going to form antibodies against both A and B because that is foreign. They don't recognize it because it's not on their red blood cell, so they're going to form antibodies. So what does that mean to us when it comes time to look at blood donation or transfusion where you're giving donated blood to a person? 
Well, if a person with type A blood is exposed, uh, or so let's just look at this. We have a person with type A blood, and they're going to have B antibody in their plasma. If we expose them to type A blood, they're won't be any issues because they will not form antibodies. So type A blood donated to type A does not cause any reaction with antibodies because those anti-B antibodies aren't going to react to the A antigen. So B antibody would only react to B antigen. So these antibodies are very specific to the antigen that they would combine. If we look at the bottom here, this is called an agglutination reaction. This is what we don't want to happen when we're giving somebody donated blood. So here we see type A blood is being donated to a type B recipient. So a person that is type B is going to have A antibodies which would bind to the antigens and cause a clumping reaction. If we clump our red blood cells they can't flow properly through our capillaries and as a result you're going to have clotting and death. So transfusion reactions or agglutination reactions are very serious and deadly. And there was actually a story of a humanitarian effort for a young girl who was about 15 years old from Mexico who had severe heart defects and she was, um, through major fundraising, brought to the United States to get a heart transplant. And it was a successful procedure, but after the procedure, near the end of the surgery, she needed some extra blood and somebody gave her the wrong blood type and a severe agglutination reaction ensued and she died. So very, very serious, very, very important that we properly match our blood types to our patients and that we check and double check when hanging blood and giving blood to patients that we have properly went through all the checkpoints to make sure that that's an appropriate blood type for that patient. Another type of antigen we see on red blood cells is called Rh factor. And the Rh factor is another antigen that we, a person can react to and we use the, the symbols positive negative. So if you know that your blood type for example is A positive, that means you have A antigens on your red blood cell as well as the Rh factor. If you are O negative, that means you have no antigens on your red blood cells and you are not you do not have Rh factor on your red blood cells and actually OH negative is the cleanest red blood cell to donate and receive because there's nothing on those red blood cells for us to respond to in terms of having a, an, a reaction. So what happens then if we have a mother who is Rh negative and when uh, she conceives and forms a child in her womb that that child ends up with say the father is Rh positive and the child inherits that on the red blood cells and has Rh present on the red blood cells. What can happen is near birth that child can be exposed or the mother can be exposed to the blood from the child and that causes her to form antibodies to that Rh factor. So when that crosses the placenta again which can happen happen closer to birth um, that sensitizes her. Then if she has goes on to have another child and she's sensitized to Rh, she has antibodies to Rh, that can cause problems in the newborn and cause clumping and death. It's called erythroblastosis fatalis when the mother's, red, uh, mother's antibodies which can cross the placenta um, attack the baby's red blood cells and cause an, an agglutination reaction. So what we do for mothers that are Rh negative is we give them a shot of what's called Rogam. And Rogam will actually act as um, Rh and cause the mother to form antibodies against the Rogam and not against the baby's red blood cells, thereby protecting that baby. So very, very important that we know the blood types of mothers that are coming in for um, prenatal checks so we can make sure that anybody who, are, who is Rh negative is getting the Rogam shot. So again, if you are an O negative blood type, we would really encourage you to donate your blood because your blood does not have any antigens on it which would react with the recipient's 
antibodies. And that's very, very important for um, keeping our patients safe and making sure we have a good blood supply. But now if you go and look at, uh, say, an accident scene where we have a patient on the side of the road that's bleeding profusely, we certainly don't have time to get their blood type. Um, ambulances will carry O negative blood type just to be sure that we have a clean red blood cell that we can donate to patients and um, make sure that we don't have to worry about blood typing in the meantime. But if they would need more blood and we have time once they come to the hospital, then we would definitely try to match the blood to their blood type. So regardless of your blood type, all blood types are needed and it's important that everybody donate if they're able. So there's a really interesting um, game you can play with blood typing. I highly recommend you go to this. We'll look at this in just a little bit, but before we do that I want to talk quickly about sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a disease of the red blood cells and if we look at the DNA that codes for the different amino acids to form hemoglobin, we'll see that there is a single amino acid change in the sequence of amino acids. It's a mutation that changes the amino acids for the protein that makes that is known as hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein made up of amino acids and if one of those amino acids is changed by mutation it results in a funny shaped red blood cell when oxygen levels are low. So normally the red blood cell should have this round biconcave appearance but if oxygen levels get low for example you know at high altitudes, extreme exercise, um, poor oxygenation because of maybe asthma or emphysema, we're going to see this sickle shaped red blood cell. And these will get caught up in the circulation and cause poor blood flow and clumping and can be very, very painful for those patients and can lead to death because it impairs blood flow to the vital organs. Here we can see a picture, or a, this is a tissue slide of the blood. You can see these sickle shaped cells. Uh, the interesting part though is that these um, sickle cells um, tend to be uh, resistant to malaria. So in countries where malaria is a problem, um, having carrying the gene, being a carrier, being um, having mild sickle cell anemia because a person is heterozygous for the sickle cell gene um, actually makes them resistant to malaria. So that actually keeps the sickle cell gene in the gene pool because it's protective against malaria. Um, but those that are uh, homozygous recessive for sickle cell anemia have the disease and often have difficulty throughout their life and may even have a shortened lifespan because of the problems associated with sickle cell anemia.